likely not too long before our own. The human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence. And this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in a seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. when you run a flower shop on Skid Row. I'm sorry. Seymour, what's going on back there? Very little, Mr. Mushnich. Audrey, you better go back there and see what he's... Audrey, where'd you get that shiner? Shiner? Audrey, it's that greasy boyfriend of yours. He's been beating up on you again. Look, I know it's none of my business, but I'm beginning to think he's not such a nice boy. You don't meet nice boys when you live on Skid Row, Mr. Wushnik. I doubt these plans be part of you, Mr. Seymour, look who you've done the inventory! Don't yell at Seymour, Mr. Mushnik. Hi, Audrey. You look radiant today. Is that you I make up? <laughs> I'll clean it up before any of the customers get here. Well, that ought to give you plenty of time. Look! God! What an existence I got! Misfit employees, bumps on the sidewalks, Excuse you. business is lousy. My life is a living hell! You! Urchins! Off the stoop! It ain't bad enough I have winos permanently decorating the storefront. I need three worthless ragamuffins like you to complete the picture? Oh, we ain't bothering nobody. Are we, Crystal? No, we're not, Ronnie. You ought to be in school. We're on the split shift. Right. We went to school to the fifth grade. Then we split. So how do you intend to bet yourselves? 
better ourselves. Mr. William from Skid Row ain't no such thing. Alarm goes off at seven and you start up town. You put in your eight hours for the powers that have always been. Sing it, child. Second place. 
Mr. Mushnick, has it ever occurred to you that maybe what this company needs is a, a move in a new direction? What Finn was trying to say, Mr. Mushnick, is, well, we've talked about it, and we both agree. Seymour, why don't you run out back and bring out that strange and interesting plant you've been working on? You see, some of those exotic plants Seymour's been tinkering around with are really unusual, and we were both thinking that maybe some of his strange and interesting plants, prominently displayed and advertised, would attract business. I'm afraid it isn't doing very well today. There. Now, isn't that bizarre? At the least. What kind of weird old plant is that, Seymour? I don't know. It looks like some kind of fly trap. I haven't been able to identify it in any of the books. So I give you my own name. I call it an Audrey too. After me? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You see, sir, if you take a strange and interesting plant like this, and you put it here in the window, then maybe... Maybe what? Do you know how ridiculous you sound? Just because you put a strange and interesting plant in the window, people don't just suddenly... Excuse me! I couldn't help noticing that strange and interesting plant. <laughs> It's an all tree, too. I've never seen anything like it before. No one has. Where did you get it? Well, you remember that totally clip to the sun a couple weeks ago? I was walking in the wholesale flower dishes that day. And I passed by this place for this old Chinese man. He sometimes tells me he fears an exotic honey. Because he knows it's a strange plant from my heart. Sound like something from another world. The lights came back. This queer plant was just sitting there. See? Just stuck in there. You know, among the zinnias. Audrey, too. I could have sworn it hadn't been there before. But the old Chinese man sold it to me anyway. Well, I'm here. I may as well buy fifty dollars worth of roses. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. Can you break a hundred? Uh, no. I'm afraid we uh closed the register for the day. Well then, I'll just have to take twice as many, won't I? Twice as many. Twice as many. Twice as many. Yes, sir, right away, sir. Audrey, my darling, kindly fetch this fine young gentleman a hundred dollars worth of our very finest American beauty roses. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir, that is one strange and interesting plant. Thank you. Well, don't just stand there. Quick, 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 put that plant on. What do you call it? An Audrey too. Put that Audrey too in the window over there where I pass if I can see it. My God, I'd never have believed it. My children, I'm taking us all to dinner. Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Mushnick, but I have a date. Would that say no good, Nick? I'm telling you, Audrey, you don't need a date with him. You need a major medical. You need a good, clean kind of boy. He's a professional. What kind of professional rides a motorcycle and wears a black leather jacket? He's a rebel, Mr. Mushnick. But he makes good money. And besides, he's the only fellow I've got. Enjoy dinner. Good night, Seymour. Good night. Poor girl. Are we still going to dinner? <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Trombone, you're staying right here and taking care of this sick plant. How come it's fading all the time? I told you, it hasn't been feeling very, very well. It just looks like this. You all you choose not a healthy girl. Between you and me, neither is the water in one. <laughs> if only I knew what breed it was. What genus? But it's nowhere in any of the books. Well, my advice to you is you better figure it out and fast. Look at this exotic little beauty did for our business. I know. So work. Nurse this plant back to health. 
I'm counting on you. I know. You do? I do. So thanks. Good night. Oh, Chewie. I don't know what else to do with you. Mr. Moon and Audrey, they just met you. But I've been going through this with you for weeks. Very sippy little friend. Or he doesn't like stubborn. What does he want? What is it you need? I've given you sunshine. Now please, oh, 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 please. 